Uh, first of all, thank you all for coming to today's open class. And today's topic, as you can see, is what you need to know about SAT Math 2. So before I start the open class, let me just briefly introduce myself and uh, since I expect some um, uh, new students, new parents. So I have been teaching different subjects for over 15, uh, 17 years. I have taught math, um, statistics, and academic reading and writing. I'm currently a tenured engineering professor at a US institution, and I received my PhD in engineering and then also did my postdoc training in medi uh, medical informatics from Stanford. I also work at, uh, as a data scientist at Coursera. And as you can see uh, through my career path, and I have been very passionate about ed uh, education and I especially enjoy helping students reach their potentials. And uh, here are some uh, testimonies from my previous students. And um, I'm very fortunate to have a very intelligent, uh, intelligent students working with me and like helping them to achieve their high potential. And 90% uh, of my students received a perfect score in ICT Math to 800 and 95% score 780 or above. Okay, so here's the outline of the topics I will be covering today. And I will start with a general introduction of what, uh, what SAT subject tests really are and why you should take it, which one you should take, and when you should take it. And I will deep, uh, do a deep dive into the two math subject tests, level one and versus level two, so you can see the uh, difference between the two and make a decision on which one you should take. And finally, and probably most importantly for today's open class is how you should prepare for SAT subject, math level two. Okay, uh, is, uh, if some of our students and some of uh, the students here have taken SAT or ACT or have some better understanding of SAT or ACT is, you know that SAT, ACT, uh, designed to assess your ability to succeed in college in general. And uh, still it is required a test for, a, uh, for you to enter a selective college. And the, the complete test lasts very long, almost four, uh, almost four hours, if uh, including the essay portion. And the questions in SAT or ACD can be weird. And that's why students can miss some questions, not because they don't know how to solve the problems, but because they are tricked by the questions. And then let's take a look at what are the key characteristics of SAT subject tests. Now, subject tests are designed to measure your knowledge and the skills at specific areas. So that's a test for you to demonstrate your, um, you, uh, you having advanced knowledge in that particular areas. Uh, SAT subject tests can be required, recommended, considered, or uh, uh, being treated as alternative depending on the schools you uh, want to apply. So you make sure that you carefully study uh, the school you're, uh, you're interested in applying to figure out whether subject tests are required or recommended uh, flowing into which category. And this test is, uh, is kind, of, uh, kind of short and each test is only lasts one hour with multiple choice questions only. And uh, another um, and another as good aspect about SAT subject test is that it tends to be more straightforward uh, compared to SAT and um, ACT test. Okay, so how do college use SAT subject test scores and why you should take it? And the uh, SAT subject test scores give college a, an opportunity to gain more insight into students' academic background and the achievement in specific subject areas. Again, this is a chance for you to show up your skill or your, uh, you having advanced knowledge of uh, this particular subject area. And many of the highly selected schools, including most Ivy League, factor SAT subject test scores into the applicant's academic index when making an admission decision. They may also use the subject test scores for guiding new students' course placement and advising uh, in the future. So now suppose you, have, uh, suppose you think that it would be to your advantage to take SAT subject test. So the next question naturally will be which test or test you should take. 
The most important consideration, of course, should be the requirements or recommendations of the college you plan to apply. So for example, some schools want you to take subject tests related to your intended majors, while others want one subject test from um, math or science and another one from literature or history. Some schools require only one subject test, some require more. So again, you have to study, uh, you have to uh, take a close look at the school requirement. And of course, given that you, uh, you were satisfied requirements from the college, uh, you have to uh, pick the subjects that you're best at or enjoy the most, ideally both. Okay, because again, this is a test where you want to show your best ability in certain areas. Okay, so the next question is when you should take test. Now remember, this test are your chance to demonstrate your mastery over a certain subject, whether it's a subject you have taken at school or a one that you have learned a lot about on your own. Therefore, it will be ideal to take the test when the content is still fresh and ready in your mind. You don't want to take the subject test uh, a couple of years after you have taken the subject because you have to go back to review your notes one more time, which, which may not be very effective a way to approach a test. And another logistic issue you need to consider is that if you are planning uh, for SAT concurrently is most student, uh, most subject tests are offered on the same date as, uh, as the SAT test day, except for March. But you can take up to three tests, uh, three subject tests on the same date. So you want to, if you want to uh, make sure that you have uh, enough chances to take SAT, uh, retake SAT if necessary. Another important factor, which is often, uh, often overlooked by students, is to have a balanced schedule of all the tests you have to take, including your school exams, SAT versus ACT, or SAT or ACT SAT subjects, AP, or even your co-curriculum or extracurriculum activities. You don't want to be overwhelmed and taking all the tests around the same time. Okay, so uh, which may lead to not doing well in, in any of the tests. Okay, so now, uh, now let's take a, a look at comparison between the two, uh, the two SAT math subjects, level one versus level two, or sometimes you just call that math two uh, versus math one. Now, as you can see, the, the, two, the two tests have the same test structure, meaning one hour for 50 multiple choice questions, in terms of prerequisites for taking the two tests, they both require students ha having taken one year of geometry plus two years of algebra. But uh, on the top of that, for, SA for taking SAT Math 2, you also should have learned pre-calculus and uh, trigonometry. Plain geometry accounts for almost 20% in SAT Math 1, but it's not directly testing SAT 2. Okay, so that's another important factor to consider. So given that, SAT Math 2 apparently covers more advanced topics than Math 1, you may think, does that mean it is easier to take SAT Math 1 compared to SAT Math 2? Well, this is actually not so true as long as you have taken pre-calculus and the trigonometry and you think that you're pretty good at this, uh, at, at them. Because SAT, because SAT Math 1 is testing fewer concepts you can expect more abstract, uh, more complicated multi-step problems to test the same core concepts in variety of ways compared to, uh, variety of ways in compared to SAT Math 2. Now, if, if you have taken SAT 1, the general SAT, and probably you understand what I mean, SAT 1 math tests even fewer advanced, uh, advanced topics compared to SAT subject tests but getting a perfect score in SAT1 math is not really easy. So meaning that simpler test doesn't necessarily mean the test is, uh, uh, you, is easier for you to get a full score because our goal is to get a full score. 
Okay, and uh, here just to illustrate that you know, getting a full score in level one is not easier than getting a full score in level two. I'm showing you the, the, the comparison between the two tests in terms of the skilled score conversion table. As you can see that in order to get 800 in level one, basically you can only make uh, at most one mistake. And uh, uh, later on I will say that you actually will lose points for each wrong answer choice. And then for math, uh, for math two, you can still get 800 if you answer 44 questions correctly and the four wrong and leave two blank. Okay, so that give you more room, um, uh, give uh, more room for making mistake. Of course, I'm not suggesting you should uh, make more mistakes, but uh, for students who sometimes can be make a, little, a couple of dumb mistakes and SAT math two actually is a better bet for getting a full score. Okay, and there here is a uh, the percentile ranks of the two tests. Now that's why we em uh, keep emphasizing that uh, for students, if you your intended major is related to engineering or biomedical field, you want to make sure that you achieve uh, 800, uh, 800 in your math math two test. Because if you look at the percentile, about twenty percent students who take SAT math two on a given date could achieve that level, could achieve eight hundred. So get 800 is not, you know, does not mean you're 99th percentile. It, it only puts you at the, the top 80th percentile. Okay, so the next thing, uh, which is the most important part for today's uh, open class is how to prepare for the test. Now to do well in the test, you need to know the test. Of course, you need to know uh, what we cover and how they will be tested. And also you need to know yourself, meaning that you need to know, um, you know how to overcome your weakness and uh, how to uh, enhance your uh, strength in the test. You need to practice regularly with the right materials the right way. And for each, after each practice, make sure that you carefully examine your mistakes. Otherwise, actually just waste your time because you're, you're not improving after practice. Before you go to the real tests, uh, take time to take at least four mock tests mimicking the real test structure without being interrupted. And also during this preparation stage, keep monitoring your progress, making sure that you're improving. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, the contents that, are, uh, that will be covered in SAT Math 2 and as well as the, the percentage, the questions in the test. As you can see, algebra, still accounts for the most in SAT, in SAT uh, similar to SAT 1 math. And, but in this case, algebra accounts to like about 50%. But of course, SAT math two has more advanced topics in each of the category. And the red fonts, in case you're wondering, uh, the topics shown in red font are the, the new topics, the topics that were not covered, and not, uh, that are not covered in SAT 1 math, but are covered in SAT, uh, SAT math two. And also these topics tend to be uh, more challenging for most of students. And either because they, they took this, well, they didn't uh, have a solid foundation with those subjects because um, their school moved very fast with these subjects. And uh, so algebra accounts for the most and then followed by geometry and the measurement. And the trigonometry plays a very important role um, in, um, in SAT math too, especially uh, we now know that SAT 1 math, the general SAT, plays down the, uh, the emphasis uh, in geometry, and then they balance that out. So they put more emphasis in, in geometry uh, in SAT sub math subject tests. And the other two topics that kind of evenly divide the remaining of the questions are numbers and operations, and the data analysis, statistics, and the probability. Okay, one nice thing about subject test uh, is that this test consists only of multiple choice questions. We know that actually answering multiple choice questions is easier than answering the uh, free response questions. And uh, because remember your job in a multiple choice question is to find a way to pick the right answer without necessarily producing the right answer yourself. Okay, so you have to decide between, uh, between the two approaches. If you feel that it's very easy for you to answer, it just take you uh, uh, 
a few seconds to answer the question right away directly using the direct approach, go ahead and do that. But you feel that solving the problem directly by yourself is going to take a little bit long and then think of alternative approach, meaning that can you go through uh, the process of elimination, eliminating the wrong answer choices. Can you actually just plug in answer choice back to whatever the equation or inequality you have and then to check the answer choices to see which one is correct. Okay, so and uh, I cannot give a open class on math without showing you math questions. So here's an, a, an example. Uh, uh, so for you to take a look. So I will just give you a, a one minute and to, for students to take a look at the problem and I quickly go over that. If you can finish the problem uh, within one minute and feel free to type the answer um, in our chat box. Okay, someone says two, which is correct. Wonderful. Okay, now, so this is an algebra problem, uh, apparently. And then the question asks you to find the intersection point of two intersection points of two graphs. It tells you there are two intersection points. And uh, our goal is to find the, the, the length, the distance between the two intersection points. And uh, you can see that this problem has a lot of variables. So the first, the first equation has y equals uh, bx squared, and the other is y equals k minus bx squared. So if I want to solve that directly, that means I need to solve this equation, right? So write this, set them to be the same, and then we can solve for x. Now as says x, if I solve that to bx squared equals k, and then and now we have x equals plus minus root of k over 2b. And then d is the difference between the two x values. And I can solve the problem this way. Another way to solve the problem is when you observe the question, you probably realize that the actual value of bd squared over k does not depend on the values b, k. That means they could be anything. Well, k cannot be zero, of course, because k is the denominator, but we can, uh, so to simplify the calculation, we can assume that we can set b, both b and the k to one. And with that, we're gonna just find, we're gonna just solve this equation instead. So that becomes x squared equals one minus x squared. Compared to the previous problem, this equation looks much nice, right? And easier to solve. So we can find x equals one over two and then square root plus minus. So the difference between the two will be two times one over two times root of one over two. That is, that is D. 
That's the difference between the two. And then back to solve the quotient itself. So both B and the K are one, and what is D squared? So D squared will be the square of two times root of one over two, square that, so we will have two. Okay, so that's how we can simplify our calculation in the test. SAT, uh, SAT subject uh, is, is similar to SAT one test is that they test your students, uh, they test your students the ability to solve problems creatively. It's not just knowing how to solve them correctly. And sometimes solving the problem, uh, there are multiple ways to solving the same problem, but there's one approach which is better than the another approach because this approach allows you to get the answer more quickly. Because in a time test, we have to, we have to achieve accuracy at the same time we want to achieve speed. Okay, so that's for this problem. And two is the right answer. Now let's look at a matrix problem. Well, this one looks complicated, but I can tell you that uh, for those who already forgot the matrix or have not learned the matrix, and the school teacher that has not taught you matrix, I can tell you that when you multiply two matrices, you have to make sure that the, the number of columns of the first, the left matrix has to match the number of rows in the right matrix. And A, B, C, D, E in this problem, the answer choice A, B, C, D, E in this problem, all contain the uh, one matrix multiplied by another matrix, right? Even if you know, have no idea how to solve this problem, but you know that you can only multi multiply two matrices when the number of columns in the left matrix equals the number of rows in the right matrix, you can start eliminating answer choices, right? A cannot work because A has three, row, uh, three columns and but, um, the, left, uh, the left matrix has three columns, the right matrix only have one row, so that won't work. And then if you look at B, well, B has three columns in the left matrix and the three rows in the second matrix. So B will be possible just by the, by the feasibility of multiplying two matrices. And then, and then C is that you're gonna multiply. Uh, it has three columns and three rows in C. So B will also work if just by, by the, again, by the um, feasibility of multiplying two matrices, you can eliminate, a, you can eliminate the D and the E. And then between B and the C. Now between B and the C, the question asks you to uh, find then you, uh, in this case, you need to read the question carefully. But uh, like I said, if you have no idea how to solve a matrix problem, but just through elimination, and you can knock down your answer choices to between two answer choices. And then you can take a guess at that time if, it, if you don't know how to proceed. But if you know how to proceed, and you will see that C is the correct answer. Okay, we're not getting too much into the matrix in open class. Just give you uh, like some examples to demonstrate that the power of the process of elimination or the process, the power of plug-in numbers to simplify the calculation. Okay, and um, knowing the order of difficulty in SAT Math 2 is also important. In particular, we know that earlier questions tend to be more straightforward uh, compared to later questions. And the students tend to answer the earlier question correctly and tend to miss the later questions. Now, the later questions are hard uh, because of multiple reasons. And uh, those usually later questions, uh, they are technically more challenging because they test more advanced topics. And they require more, uh, they require students knowing more sophisticated mathematical concepts. But also they, are ten, uh, they tend to be more tricky with enticing wrong answers that seem correct. So that tells you, you have to pace well in the, in the test. Meaning that don't spend too much time in the earlier part of the test. If you don't know how to solve a problem, and uh, if the problem is in the earlier part of the test, you're gonna skip it and move on to the, uh, to the next question. Because you, you expect that uh, you, you will have to, uh, you will actually spend, you need more time, you need to spend more time with the later part of the test. But knowing how to pace yourself and when to skip a question is very important in a time test. Okay, that's a very important skill to learn in any test. 
Okay, and some parents ask whether calculus allowed in the test. The good news, uh, the good news is yes, uh, it is yes. And uh, so you can use a calculator throughout the entire test. But I'm not saying that you have to always use your calculators for all the questions. In fact, it's very important to know when to use your calculator and to use your calculus wisely. Um, if we consider the percentage of questions um, where calculators would be helpful, only 30% of questions are calculated essential, meaning that these are the questions in, uh, for which using calculator will, do your, uh, will give you advantage. Those questions involve complete calculations, which is kind of obvious, right? And uh, who wants to do the uh, solve exponential equation or do the uh, solving a log log logarithm equations manually? And the same for trick functions. So whenever you see a problem involves complete calculations, go ahead and use a calculator. And if you see a question involving matrix, multi, uh, matrix uh, calculations, such as finding inverse of matrix and the determinant matrix, use a calculator. Or a very powerful feature of the graph calculator is that it actually can graph. Therefore, if you see a function either in, in, the, in the problem itself or in the answer choices, if you don't know how the graph looks like, and then you can just graph it. And you can, uh, some equations can be solved using, uh, just by graphing it, by finding the x-intercept of that function. Then you can solve an equation. And the 30% of questions are calculator neutral, meaning that using calculus is not, necess is not necessary. So it's up to the students. If the student don't want to, um, don't want to do the calculation, even simple calculation manually, go ahead and use a calculator. However, there are 20% of questions. Oh, actually I do the, there's a little bit of a uh, rhythm, uh, <laughs> mistake here. So calculator neutral will be about uh, like 50%. And the remaining 20% of questions are unfriendly or actually useless. Now for, calcul uh, for calculator unfriendly questions, uh, that means you actually you should not use your calculator because they're, they're usually a building shortcuts in that problem. So seeing the shortcuts will allow you to solve the problem much more quickly and actually accurately. And some problems are calculated useless, meaning that you can't really use a calculator. And so I will just show you a, an example here to demonstrate that uh, a problem with building shortcut. So don't just, uh, whenever you see an equation, don't just jump into uh, using your calculator. Look at the question carefully and uh, see whether there's a building shortcut for this problem. Okay, this is a trigonometry problem, not obviously. Uh, the, this is a trigonometry expression uh, with non-special angles. Now with non-special angles, student may have tendency that, okay, I need to use my calculator, but actually that's not the best approach to solving this problem because this problem actually tells you a very important Pythagorean identity in trigonometry, but the most important Pythagorean identity in trigonometry, which is sine alpha square uh, plus cosine alpha square equals one. So if you look at the numerator, that's basically a cosine, uh, whatever that angle is, it doesn't matter which is three times 63 or five times 65 degree, as long as the first angle is the, uh, is the same as the second angle, it's basically cosine alpha square plus sine alpha square, which is one. So one to the four divided by two, that's 0.5. So that's the shortcut design for the problem. Okay, and uh, I also received a question from a parent who asked for what kind of calculators are allowed. The good news is that most graph calculators are allowed in the, uh, in the test, and uh, not just for SAT subject, uh, similar for SAT, for SAT1 test. And uh, here's the list. I, I, I think most of the calculators students are using are in the list. And all scientific calculators are allowed, but for SATs, for SAT subject test, a graph calculator is much more preferred uh, than the scientific calculator, uh, mainly because the graphing power of the graph calculator. And there's a bad news in SAT math two test, oh, and you're gonna be deducted for one fourth point for each wrong answer. And in SAT1, we usually tell students, if you don't know how to answer a question, try your luck on that day and then pick an answer. Um, hope maybe you, you will be right, but we don't suggest that for SAT math too, simply because that you actually will be punished for each wrong answer choice. 
So that means blind guessing is simply pointless. Don't waste your energy or time to blind guess a question. If you have no idea how, how to solve the problem, skip it, move forward. However, educated guessing is worthwhile, just like the matrix problem I described to you. If you know something that will allow you to eliminate the obvious wrong answer choices, then you can use your, and then you can um, use your knowledge to help you to eliminate obvious wrong answer choices. If you can, if you can limit like two or three answer choices, and then between the remaining two or three, probably it's worthwhile to take a guess. Okay, so when I'm talking about the probability, the probability you're getting right and among a one out of three is one third, and which is greater than the one fourth point, the deduction, the penalty for each wrong answer. Okay, but if, I, you are, if you are a very conservative person or pessimistic person, and then uh, you can just move forward without uh, making a guess. So basically only answer the questions that you, you are confident that you answer correctly. Okay, so I have talked about the test. And you also know, you need to know yourself, especially your target score, your strength, and your weakness. Now your target score determines how many problems you have to get right. If your goal is to get 800, actually not too much to say here. And uh, so you have to uh, make sure that, um, like I said earlier, you can, uh, you can still get 800 if you answer 44 questions right, four wrong, and leave two blank. But uh, uh, if you're a very cautious person, you leave all the questions you don't know how to answer, uh, you don't, don't answer blank, uh, that means you're, you focus on your accuracy, then probably you can even um, miss uh, six questions, you still get uh, even seven questions, you still get 800. Okay, but don't put yourself at the, uh, the, the, the cut point, which is a little bit risky because whether how they decide to curve the converter score and the curve the score really depends on the, all, the, all your peers who are taking the test on the same day. Okay, and then your strength. Uh, of course, uh, we want to make sure that we leave time, enough time to work on the problems that in, your, in our strong areas and to get them right. Okay, your accuracy is still the most important thing. Don't trade off your, uh, don't trade your accuracy because of speed. And also don't spend too much time uh, pondering a question where, which uh, actually is in your, weak, in your weak spot. That's during the test. But during the preparation stage, you actually want to uh, kind of ruthlessly um, target your weakness. And how can you know what is your weakness? By studying each and every mistake you make in your practice. Now here's a breakdown of the main, um, the main courses for mistakes I have seen among students. Number one, content gap. Now, if you have identified a content gap, that's the first thing you have to address right now. Okay, before you, before you worry about anything else, you need to fill that gap as soon as possible. And the time management means that some students, they just like too slow. Okay, and spend too much time thinking. Now, SAT uh, subject tests are more straightforward compared to SAT one. If you have seen some question, you will see, you will see that question tend to be short. And then uh, kind of, uh, if you know how to solve the problem, you know it. And after a few seconds, you should know how to solve the problem. Don't stare at the problem for over one minute. If you don't know how to solve the problem, move on. Okay, skip the problem you don't know how to solve. Uh, how to solve. I'm not saying that you, you unnecessarily gave up the problem but move, move on to finish all the other problems first. And if you still have time remaining, then you can always come back to, to this problem. Now, problem comprehension means that some students are impatient. They don't actually finish reading the question. Like they, jump, they, they jump through the question. I can tell you that you can save time, you'll speed up by finding the most creative approach to solving the problem, not by reading the problem too fast. Now, although compared to SAT1, and the general test of SAT, SAT Math 2 contains fewer um, like a tricky questions, fewer traps. There are still traps, okay, especially toward the end part of the test. So be, please carefully read the question, okay? And the, this is not the part I want to uh, move fast to save time. You save time by answering question fast, not by reading question too fast. Now, test driven is some students, they, uh, they tend to get too nervous during the test. We all get nervous during the test. That's very uh, natural. But if you get too nervous during the test, that actually uh, affects your negative impact, your performance, and then you have to work on that right now. That means you 
have to take more mock tests, more practice tests, and put yourself in a place where can, can which mimic the real test setting. Okay, those don't take the test in your bedroom, which looks so comfortable. Uh, so put yourself in a, a room with only the desk. Okay. Well, careless mistake, we, uh, I heard a lot from students. Well, this is a careless mix, mistake. Well, but who cares whether that's a careless mistake? Uh, if you missed a problem, you missed a problem. Who knows? I mean, who cares about the reason, right? And also, SAT tests, whether that's a general test or that's a subject test, those tests are designed to punish careless mistakes. That's why they have that building traps. They want to see, who, they, they, want to cap, uh, they want to catch the students who tend to be careless. Now, having said that, since the, uh, the SAT math two test is, is a kind of torrent to mistakes. So if you make a couple of careless mis mistakes, probably you can get away, but don't make that excuse, okay? So don't make that habit that, um, you know, if you miss careless mistakes and then you ignore that, the careless mistakes do accumulate. If you make too many careless mistakes, and your score will drop. Okay, now practice. Best practice makes perfect, not any practice. Okay, if you do bad practice, actually it makes you even worse. So what does that mean? That means you should use quality materials. At best, official practice materials are real test, at least one similar to real test. And also you need to zone in your own weak areas. Well, that's the purpose during practice, right? For every practice, the reason I will ask you to carefully examine each and every mistake you make is that after practice, there's a chance to improve. If you don't, uh, if you don't zone in on improving your weak, uh, weak areas, what's the point during the practice? Actually, just waste time. You still know what you know, and the still don't know what you don't know. And also take mock tests under real test conditions. Like I said, you need to get used to the, um, the, the speed and the, the pace and also the nervousness during the test. Okay, for SAT, that's, uh, for SAT subject test, that should be easy to do. You have no excuse. This is one hour, right? One hour each test and then nonstop. And also during the preparation, keep tracking your progress, making sure that you are improving. If your, if your score is stuck at, seven, say, 750, something's wrong. Okay, um, so you need to figure out why you're not improving and uh, hopefully you are improving and eventually you will have, you will reach your target score. Okay, so actually that's what I have for uh, today's open class and, and I want to leave uh, enough time for the Q&A section. So you have any question, uh, you can uh, type in. Okay, so we have so parents raise me their hand. Okay, so give me a second. Let me see. So, Vicky, do you have a question? Mm. Oh, actually, Vicky. Uh, uh, Zoom says that because you are running on an old version of Zoom, you can really talk. So can you just type in your question in the, in the chat box? Sorry about that. Zoom disallow, uh, does not allow me to give you uh, the opportunity to talk. Okay, so Lily, uh, 您这里六月份前,您这里还有SHM的培训吗? Uh, yes, uh, actually we have a SAT Math 2 a group class coming starting from next week and on the 16th. And it runs for eight, uh, six weeks. And then the, the group class many targets student uh, targets for the June test, helping students shooting for the June test. Okay, what's the best way to eliminate careless mistakes? It is designed to catch students. Well, read the question carefully and also have the, always have the habit of quickly double check answers. Um, so for example, for algebra problem, you know, and I, I know some students, they just type in, they just start entering the numbers in the calculator without writing down uh, their equations. And if I see this, I always stop them. I say, okay, write it down. Write down your equation before you type in the equation before you type in the numbers in your calculator. You have to make sure that before you hit that enter button, 
on your calculator. Double check your number entry line one more time. Okay, so again, read the question carefully, especially the very last sentence, which asks you exactly what you need to solve for. And also have the habit of quickly double check answers. Uh, if you tend to make um, careless mistakes in calculation, double check your uh, calculation one more time. Yeah, so being careful to start with and also double checking your answer. Uh, SAT2 um, I think like I said earlier, um, you want to take SAT subject right after you finish uh, the relevant course at a school. Because the more you learn, and the, 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 the later, the more advanced you become, um, you're moving away from the subject. Um, so you're taking, so for example, you have a taking subject, well, taking AP is kind of different. Well, AP, um, uh, if you take, uh, for example, if you want to take, well, I say uh, for the math, okay, for math only, if you're taking, uh, if you're moving to, uh, mo moving to AP calculus, and that actually does not help you with SAT math too. But talking about other science subjects, for example, chemistry or physics, taking AP will actually help you with uh, SAT. But the, the, uh, so, so the short answer is that as long as you finish the relevant class at the school, it's the, uh, it's the best time to start preparing for the test. And it shouldn't take you very long. And this is not a test that uh, takes you like three, uh, like three months or longer to prepare. And you need to longer time for SAT, the SAT one test, the general test. But SAT subject, usually students can, now once they have finished the relevant classes at the school, and maybe within a month or two, they are ready to take a subject test. And I think that, well, there's no particular requirement when uh, at what grade the student should take. But once again, once, uh, as long as, once you finish taking the relevant class at school, you are ready to take tests. We, and I have students who took SAT Math 2 at ninth grade and got a perfect score. Uh, does your score on SAT subject area expire? For example, I'm in seventh grade now, and I want to take as a subject test. I want to ask if it will count when I'm in the. Um, I don't think there's a like hardcore number saying that uh, the score will expire within certain days, but we normally say five years within five years. So as long as that by the time you submit the scores to your college application, that's within five years, that should be fine. Yeah. If you're not sure on the uh, contact the particular college, and I think that may also vary among different schools. So if you, if you, uh, if you are, uh, if you know what kind of school you want, you're interested in applying and then uh, contact the admission officer and to, just to make sure that you are not taking a test too early. But what I know is that five years is the is usually the uh, the time frame. Okay, where can we purchase real tests from? Um, I I know that um, College Board has recently published uh, three three tests, but two of which uh, actually were published in the in the previous version. So act, so you have three real tests from College Board, and then we also um, kind of have other. Uh, get some real tests from other sources and also by kind of uh, uh, also adapting by uh, coming up with questions that mimic the the real test uh, the real test they have released so officially uh, so again officially they released released the three tests three real tests but you know we can can look at the questions and the carefully study the question and then come with question that's similar to the real test questions Okay, so similarly, the other question, where can we find a real SAT method test set? Yeah, again, there's only one, uh, one book officially uh, published by, uh, published by a college board. You can find that on Amazon. I think it was published uh, last September. How to aim for perfect score? One, my student got perfect score, seven, three, is that good? <laughs> of course, that's good. Yeah, and um, yeah, so as long as the students very advanced in math and uh, having taken a trigonometry and uh, actually they don't test you at, at everything in trigonometry and uh, uh, 
uh, pre-calculus. They test, they, test, they, test, uh, they only test specific topics in pre-calculus and the trigonometry. So you can just focus on studying uh, the topics, testing the test, and they actually uh, can do well, even without formally taking pre-calculus and the trigonometry at school. But of course, the student needs to uh, be able to pick up the advanced topics and uh, have a kind of good understanding of the uh, advanced topics. Do you offer classes to other SAT subject tests? Uh, I, uh, yeah, yes, we do. But a current group lesson uh, we plan to have for the June test is only in the math test. Um, and we also, uh, for the other subjects, because uh, most of, uh, at, at, at this time, most of students who aim for the June test are also very busy with their AP tests. So most of students who want to take uh, the June subtest, they, uh, they are doing, you know, some students are doing private lessons with me. And so the group lessons are for students who you don't have, you know, they are they're actually above average already. And but for students who have their unique weakness and they, they, they want to have private lessons. Okay, so I got 710 in the practice test. Usually I miss the last 10 questions, how to improve. Yeah, the last 10 questions are the hardest one. So I don't blame you. Um, this is where the most students miss the problems. So you have to figure out what the, uh, what the last 10 questions really, uh, what, what kind of topics they target. Uh, if you notice that, you know, you tend to miss, say the probability question, that means you need to focus on practicing improving the probability. But you feel that you know those topics, but still answer the question incorrectly, miss those questions. That just means that like the, um, the, the, you are trapped by the questions. You are uh, you're kind of tricked by the traps in the questions. Okay, so we need to ask for, so I, I, can't, I can't tell you exactly how to improve. You have to look at the, the last 10 questions. But like I said, the last 10 questions are the hardest questions in the entire test. Uh, so next question, do you recommend taking a CT math to after completing pre-calculus? Mm, uh, yes, ideally. But if you feel that completing pre-calculus, um, well, I, I think if, if, if that's the only part you are concerning, probably you can't just take a, a mock test and the practice test and the see uh, how, you know, what, uh, how much you can get already without taking pre-calculus. If there's just like a couple of questions and that probably you don't have to uh, wait till you complete pre-calculus. But if, if, you, if you miss like 10, uh, like 10, 15 questions, then the answer is yes. Okay, actually I have seen students who uh, took SAT master before completing pre-calculus and still got 800. I think it's because the student just, like I said, uh, SAT master does not test all the topics in pre-calculus. It tests some of the topics in pre-calculus. If we just focus on studying those topics for the sake of taking math too, then you can do that. Uh, do you do one-to-one -one analysis? Yes, yeah, we do private lessons, um, helping students who have their, uh, the, the unique, uh, unique weakness or students who actually are way above average and just need a couple of, hour, a couple of classes to just zone in for the student unique weakness. Should you take both SD1 master? No, I think one's enough. There's no point of taking both. And just like, uh, I, I think even for AP calculus, AB or BC, you know, it's kind of debatable and then some students take both, but I open is that just take one. Um, yeah, just even for AP calculus, just take one. And the form as, as it is subject test, just take one. And uh, if you have, if you, if you have taken trigonometry uh, or pre-calculus and take math two, not math one. Some school actually specifics require uh, students who are interested in applying engineering or medical field, uh, they require at math two. Okay, uh, yeah, so uh, go check the the, the college are interested in applying, they have the requirements specific listed. I know Carlin, uh, at least Carnegie Mellon, uh, for their engineering students, they require math too. It's possible to take SAT math to subject? No, you cannot. Um, because the, I mean, all the, all the tests, uh, SAT or SAT subject tests um, are given on the same day, except for March, when only SAT is offered. So meaning that whenever you want to take SAT subject, you actually use the day 
held for SAT as well. Okay, so you have to balance two, especially. Uh, okay, so 关于SAT Math 2 the full sheet Uh Okay, so I kind of already answered the question. And uh, so, um, yeah, so the only one of official released practice test is from College Board itself. And other than that, and uh, we have our own practice materials by kind of adapting the real tests. And so for, uh, for example, we have a practice test separated by the topics like trigonometry, algebra, statistics, and uh, numbers and operations. And also these questions kind of uh, are taken from the real test and also adapting some of the questions. I did not finish the pre-calculus course yet at school because my course is L2 pre-calculus, I'm ready to take math. Yeah, okay, so I cannot, I cannot say yes or no. So this is for John, uh, Jonah. I cannot say yes or no. Uh, the best way for, for us to find out is to take a, a test so you will know uh, how far and what, uh, how, how much gap you still have. Okay, like I said, if you only miss one or two questions, probably you're fine. But still spend time to um, just targeting the, pre, the, the few pre-calculus topics, testing the test. Okay, no content from calculus class required for SAT Math 2. Okay, that's why I said probably only for math, taking calculus does not help you SAT Math 2, but for the other science, uh, for the other science subjects like physics, chemistry, and biology, taking AP, AP actually will help you uh, to uh, help you for the subject test, but not for math. And the math is very hierarchical. And uh, as you can see, doing well on as math, SAT math does not tell you, does not tell you whether actually you will do uh, as well in SAT one math. And the similar doing AP calculus as well does not mean you actually can do well in SAT math two. They they test different parts of the math. Okay, so Samuel, do you mean before you finish the calculus, baby, the AB, you basically qualify? Oh yes, of course. Yeah, the, when you finish, actually you are way ahead of the game. When you finish calculus in the AB, you are moving too far away from taking the subject test. So when you start taking, when you start preparing for SAT subject, actually you have to, Pull, pull yourself away, I mean, going back in time and review your old notes, your, uh, what you learned in pre-calculus or, uh, or algebra and the geometry. And what's the best way to improve from a math foundation? Well, that's a very big question to answer. Okay, my, my, uh, my suggestion is that, um, that's my also teaching philosophy. Oh, Unless the student is gonna take the take test in in a week or uh, in a week or, uh, or two, and I have I have to force the student to memorize uh, the formulas because we won't have enough time for student to uh, to go for me to go over why something works, and then hoping that student can understand and still do enough practice. But if we have enough time, say uh, for example, a few months before taking a test, building. A math foundation requires a truly understanding why something works. Otherwise, math just become memorization, which we know for sure is wrong. Okay, math is not about uh, memorization. Actually, if a student understands how something works, and I, I, I think, you know, even if you don't memorize the formula, you can quickly derive that during the test. Yeah, so knowing how something works and also plus some practice. And the practice, um, I, I personally don't think practicing a lot is absolutely necessary, really depending on the student. Some students, they, you can just give them a few practice tests and they, they get it. But some students, you need more practice. So that's really case by case. So knowing the students, how was the best way for students to maintain the information, that means building a, a solid foundation and also with some a right practice and the practice, basically practice focusing on the student weakness rather than practicing just for the a pure number of practice. Okay, doing too much practice is absolutely unnecessary. We know uh, our, our students are very busy. The students are very busy, high school students are very busy. So you need, you need to like value their time and, uh, and also help them to best use their time just for improving their weakness. And uh, for, for the things that you already know, they don't need that practice. No, they don't need so much practice.
also, of course, finding a way that works the best for students. Some students need to be, uh, be pushed a little bit, and some students, they are very self-disciplined. You don't need to push them. They already know what they need to do. You just guide them, and then they will follow. If the first test score is not good in August, can I rush to the test? Yes. Okay, and I think some parents even ask me how many tests should I take? I will say at the most two, but actually um, you don't want to take tests for the sake of taking the test. It's really a waste of time and energy. You take a test when you think you are ready. Um, you retake it only because that you thought it would be ready, but something happened, something unexpected happened, and you didn't do well. And actually that's out of expectation. It's not because you, go, you don't go for a test when you expect not doing well. Right, you go to test when you expect you're gonna do well, but something happened, uh, unfortunately something as, uh, expand, unexpected happened and you didn't do well, and then you will take it. And the SAT subject test, you know, the, the purpose of the test is to show that you're actually an expert in a certain area. So it doesn't make sense for you to take multiple times. So at most, twice. And also, um, yeah, so only when you feel you're fully prepared and go for the test and take a second when absolutely necessary. Yeah, I think you can report a higher score in the same year, but remember that college has that right to get all the history of your scores if they want. Okay, whether they won't do it, whether they will do it or not, that's a question, but they can do that. Especially for the highly selected schools, they may want to take a look at the history of your test scores. Yeah, so, Go for the test when you think you are ready. Okay, private lesson, face to face or online? Um, both, depending on what's the first, uh, what works the best for students, also depending on location. And so, if I'm not in the Silicon Valley area, and of course, we have to do online, but face to, but if you're local, and I feel that uh, because I have seen, uh, I have lots of students who started with face to face and they eventually convert you to online after they realize that actually not too much difference. Well, with one student, like face to face, I can see you, you can see me. And uh, actually I always watch students what they are thinking. And I want to see from the face whether they are lost or whether they are, they are paying attention. And the online class is the, I, I think the, the, main, uh, the main reason why students eventually uh, decide to online class is out of convenience. You know, they are very busy and the, the traffic in, in this area is, is, is very bad. And sometimes, uh, I mean, because they're too busy, we have to have evening classes and the staying at home is safe and the convenient in the evening. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, again, so that's up to the student and uh, of course the location. I want to know if students have to take AB course to get good score. No, okay, uh, uh, not necessarily. Well, for English and the history part, I can, I'm not expert, so I cannot speak on that part. Uh, for science, yeah, kind of related, yeah, and the AP, and so uh, the, for sub science subjects, AP is harder than SAT, but there's certain, okay, so for SAT physics, I, I know that compared to AP physics, um, SAT physics actually can cover a little bit wider range of topics, depending on what level of physics you're taking, because usually a student take physics, take one or C, and SAT subject, uh, SAT physics subject test covers a wide range of topics. So there may be uh, a few gaps or a few things that a student need to review just for the subject test. But generally speaking for science and the English history, I think uh, having the AP benefits the subject, but not for the math. Which grade is best to take any deadline? No, you can take a, uh, you can take whenever you are ready. There's no, um, no special requirement for how late or how early you have to take it. Well, any deadline is that if you want to submit it for your college application and uh, make sure you have your score by the deadline of the college application. If you, we can compare different months tests, are there any difficult curves and uh, not really, and uh, unfortunately, <laughs> not, not, not really. Uh, but I can tell you that June is the most popular time for students to take subject tests because many because students just finish uh, the, the relevant subject at school. And uh, they know that it's best to take the test right after uh, they finish the subject. So they don't have to um, later on spend more time reviewing uh, those content, actually, because that leads to waste of more time. 
yeah. So that's why May or June are the most popular months for students taking subject test. But in terms of difficult level, not really. And uh, in, yeah, in terms of curve, not, not really. Okay. All right. Okay. And also, you know, college body just don't look at that single score, right? They, uh, they actually have um, colleges don't just look at that single score. They will look at the, the percentile. They will look at uh, the, 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 the performance of the entire test uh, uh, across the board. If most students get 800, that means that's an easy test. If you still get 800, that means that's a hard test. Yeah, so don't worry about, uh, you know, where you should take in terms of trying to find the, the difficulty curve. Okay, yeah, just go for the test when you are ready. 那非常感谢Dr.Yan这么专业的讲解。那Dr.Yan在SATMF2课程还有七天即将要开课了,请有计划参加考试的同学们呢,请火速报名。因为时间关系,我们会先问题并不能完全回答大家。如果你还有问题